I still on? That's what we're doing. We're winging it. Shandor and myself. What up? Um, what's the facts, Niagara? It's not grammatically correct. It's more of a <laughs> Totally ruined the intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, two kids playing around on the... Uh, That's right. On the, you know... We're back, down in the rec room. Back in the day, it was like um, we had a tape deck that had a recording feature on it that you could oh, yeah. put some mics through. And me and my cousin Dougie used to like pretend that we were DJs. We'd, you know, talk the music in like pros. I did it all the time myself. <laughs> exactly. It was the greatest fun ever, man. We had tapes after, you know, one day I'm going to find those tapes like I did the other day. I found my, uh, my first radio show ever <laughs> on CHSC 1220. Are you talking in the right side of the mic? I am talking into the correct side of the mic. Cool. Am I talking at all? Can you hear me, Excellent. world? Excellent. I can hear you perfectly. Everyone's Hello, world. Good. Yeah. Let's What's see. going on? Let's see if we can uh, give the listeners and subscribers. It's election season. How's that feel? A picture. Are of you filled with hope <laughs> that it could be a better world if only the right candidate is elected? <laughs> this <sighs> is. Um, I'm hanging on to the possibility, however perilous it, le- it is for me to believe and be hopeful that there's a purple wave coming in. It's purple gonna, wave, huh? It's all going to be better. Well, I'm wearing my purple shades. Later. The future's right. so bright, I got to wear shades. It's better than the reality of thinking that Justin Trudeau sits in a position to be elected with a majority government and no opposition, despite the fact that 60% of the people will vote against him. Well, the he is a very loyal opposition. Like an opposition so loyal, in fact, it's it's the same side. <laughs> With I mean, I'm talking about the NDP, of course. And yeah, and the conservatives. It's you know this idea. I've heard it floated before that. Um, oops, I hope we got mics. Yeah, we got mics. Um, that the conservatives and the liberals and the the um, Republicans and the Democrats got together a long time ago and said, hey, "Okay, listen." what we're going to do. We're going to pretend that we're on opposite sides of the political spectrum, but when we get power and we'll just take turns forever, we'll just do whatever the hell we want. And it's all for the greater good. And it's all the same political party. The left and right wing are two of uh, the Two same. wings of the same bird of prey. Mm-hmm. Bird of prey. <laughs> <laughs> and they're swooping in now. They're swooping in. My goodness. Uh, of course, yesterday we had a, a big black pill day. And for those who aren't aware, I'm sure you are, a black pill is a, a pill of hopelessness, a pill of despair. And uh, we're despairing, to be honest. Uh, I'm yesterday, furious. Doug Ford's announcement uh, laid out uh, what we can expect this winter, obviously with uh, vaccine certifications and, uh, and the QR code. And so we're going to talk about that today. I think I got some links pulled up here on the screen for that. And uh, that's it. That's that's what's going on. I'm, we're uh, we're clinging desperately to any sense of hope. <laughs> and uh, but that to me doesn't mean the election at all. In fact, I consider the election to be a major distraction during the best season to protest in. Uh, this should be protest season, civil disobedience season. But instead, we're uh, 
campaigning. And of course, what that'll do is that'll create a false uh, democratic consent. The whole idea is that on September 21st, when Justin Trudeau is still prime minister, they'll be able to say, well, if you didn't like him, you should have voted against them. And then they'll give him a false mandate. And that's what concerns me is uh, is democracy is uh, really sort of a ruse in this case. To, frankly, I don't I don't consider it legitimate. You can't democratically remove my individual rights. Ninety nine percent of the population can think X, Y, Z, but they're still my rights. So that's where we're at. I don't know. You've got some strong feelings. Well, I was rammed up against it in my men's group today. Yeah. When I asked, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't give too much of this away, but I asked uh, the leader of the group. It's a it's a Christian men's group, but it's often very little scripture. Yeah. And um, it's more like a just, a, you know, well, I like the support group aspect of it because there's so much wisdom and knowledge there, and it's based in biblical teachings, which I'm kind of, not new at, but not very well versed as far as, you know, knowing the Bible, knowing my scripts and everything. And so I asked uh, Pastor Bill if he was being inundated with uh, re- religious exemption requests mm-hmm. for vaccines. And he says, oh, you, you have no idea. And then he confided in one of his struggles that he's been put up against right now. Right. And he's had many over this lockdown I don't want to I refuse to call it a pandemic because it's flu season basically to me and uh, I'm very careful in flu season I for almost 30 years I haven't touched a common doorknob or an elevator button or a you bath. germaphobe no I just don't like getting sick so I wash my hands a lot and I don't touch common surfaces that much I like I, I don't share joints or bongs I don't let people drink out of my right cup. right I don't you know, my mother used to pick up my plate, and she says, I know you hate when I do this. I said, no, I kiss you on the lips. You can eat off my fork. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> what I'm worried about is when you touch my food, and then you leave some for me. I don't want that anymore. Right. I clean my hands before I touch my well, food. Well, the government's got their grubby fingers all over our <laughs> rights. So I've o- I've always been that guy that's very careful when I'm sick. I don't go out, and that's you know I kind of I've gotten over it. But you know every time why I is walk that you had what st- they called symptoms? Yeah, like oh we don't do those to go to the anymore. Grocery store. We like, don't I mean, do symptoms anymore. I mean, I guess I go out when I have a cold, so I'm not that. But I don't want I I don't I tell people I've got a cold. I don't I don't pass the joint to them and say you know wash your hands or don't put this in your mouth type of thing. Like I. I just put it like this. I put the thing like so it holds like this, and I put my fingers out to my face. Right. And I'm just always been conscious of that, but less so the last couple of years. Okay. Yeah, I wash my hands when I get home from shopping and stuff like that before right. I, you know, it's like your kitchen. You want it clean before you eat, for, mm-hmm. before you cook. You don't cook in a clean, in a dirty kitchen. You don't prepare food with dirty hands. Right. So, yeah, in, in grade 12, they called me Germ Fan, and Dave Beaver was, was his nickname for me. So you germ- were a germaphobe. I'm just careful. I don't like getting I'm sick. Germaphobe. I don't like getting sick. So okay. I go out of my way to wash my hands, keep my hands clean, not right. touch common surfaces other than that. Did you ever get sick, though? Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, I get sick, but oh. I don't remember the last time I had a flu. Right. I really don't remember the last time Most I Most times I get sick, I usually blame myself. Not enough hydration, you know, too much staying up late, too much smoking. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I, I basically I get ill frequently, but usually... It's entirely my own lack of care for myself. Well, it, that you've got a great point there because, you know, I can equate this to every election campaign I've ever run in. Mm-hmm. Two days following that, I'm usually sick with the, with a cold, with a really bad cold. Oh, yeah. Because you're, you know, sure. you're going, 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 going. All of a sudden it stops. The right. music stops. There's no chairs to sit in and there's everyone's gone. The party's yeah. over and you're you got to clean it all up now. You, you know, right. you got people around you this whole time supporting Everything you. Everything you hope for, pumping dashed. you up, telling you're great. And then the next day you you, you, you line up and you collect your 2,000 votes at the finish line. And you're like, oh, fuck, that sucked. Well, <laughs> you know? we're collecting, then, we're then collecting votes sick. now. So that's always like a, you know, an indication that your immune system's been beat down. You've been going too hard. You've been living under too much stress. And now you're sick. That's right. You need some vitamin D. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, put, I brought this point up the other day. I know it's not lost on you, but nowhere 
at any time has anyone t- been talking about the things Joe Rogan talks about? Lose right. some weight, get some exercise, take your vitamins, take some essential fatty acid, to eat your hemp oils, eat right. your CBDs, control your inflammation, take your eat eat well, watch the junk food, don't drink too much, don't smoke. Too, like this idea, this lack of personal responsibility that we put everything off into a shot that hasn't been proven its uh, effectiveness or efficacy yet. And I think it's dropping all the time. It's getting less effective and people are getting sick with the shot. This will probably get us shut down from YouTube, but you know, which is brutal. The, the personal res- the lack of personal responsibility and the lack of health, like this is not health care. This is sick care. Right. The system doesn't work. The doctors don't get paid unless you're sick. I know that's a conspiratorial look at things, but a health care system is something that keeps you healthy, that rewards doctors for keeping you healthy. And this is a Green Party platform. Okay. It's not health care. It's sick care. Right. We treat you when you get sick instead of trying to keep you healthy. No one, none of our leaders are talking about eating, eating right, getting exercise, dropping weight. The, They're all, all in the, the contributors. Of big pharma yeah i hate to keep going back to the big conspiracy theory but i mean day after day after day we've been inundated with just our our rights being taken away the government pretending they know what's best for us and the government i've never the government's never known what's best for me conspiracy fact the government in ottawa doesn't know what's best for ridgeway or fort erie or poor colburn they're too far away right government doesn't know what's best what works for me certainly you know, we're not a collective. I mean, can, there are collective elements to society, but we are each individuals, mm-hmm. sovereign, sovereign individuals at that. Um, that's that's the main thing uh, about individual rights. And, uh, you know, I don't think either of us are exactly, uh, you know, like abortion isn't our big issue. But these days, this my body, my choice thing is coming up and it's been appropriated by the. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's fairly appropriated. What comes around goes around, weirdly. Yeah. So, I mean, so we're going to talk about some of the uh, the hypocrisies there, too. So, you know, one of the po- hypocrisies of the uh, VAC certificate is that it makes marginalized groups more marginalized. And yet it is equity advocates who are advocating its usage. So, I mean, the hypocrisy is absolutely through the roof on that. Um, you think of the case of New York City, where there's the clearest examples of this of this narrative of um, 70 percent of black people in New York City are not vaccinated, which means 70 percent of black people can't go to the gallery, can't go inside to the restaurant yeah, nobody's and on and that. on and on. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, the response argument is, hey, just get vaccinated. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, you know, the. Uh, Racially, there's a history there. Um, There's uh, racial experimentation. Indigenous peoples have been subject Mm -hmm. to experimentation. Black people have been subject to experimentation. Um, And this is a big experiment, uh, whether or not they want to admit it. Basically, they're rolling out uh, the injections and then seeing how it goes. Well, that is, by definition, an experiment. Did you know there's going to be a third shot when you started the procedures? Mm. Uh, if you didn't, then you were experimenting. So we clearly were in this big experiment. Um, what we don't know is what it'll look like in a year or two. And, you know, in the last eight months, in the last eight months, millions and millions and millions of injections. I really can't think of anything in human history that is parallel to this at all. So we're in an absolutely, totally unprecedented era. Uh, which is kind of exciting, I guess, you know, but it's also a little exhausting. We're coming up on 20 years since September 11th, Mm -hmm. 2001, which for me, uh, was one of the most formative moments. Well, it was the defining feature of my entire adulthood. I was 18 years old and bada bing, bada boom, the twin towers came down and they, it was used the fear that was generated out of that was used to invade various countries, Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, and so I actually took journalism as a consequence of it. I went to school for journalism 
as an anti-war journalist. I wanted to be a fear buster. I wanted to, I thought that the truth would, would prevent those immoral interventions of invasions. Uh, what did they call it? Preemptive war. So I see a lot of parallels between then and now because the, uh, the fear that was created in the war on terror has been magnified in the war on the virus. And so where 20 years ago, the immoral intervention was invading Afghanistan. Now the immoral intervention is invading all of our lives. And it's the same continuum in the war on the individual, individual rights. You know, the, think of the continuum from 9-11 till today. Everything from body scanners at the airports to uh, snooping laws where they, let, they can look into your email because they're trying to bust a terror cell. And then now it's on and on the individual rights have been encroached upon. And I, in my view, through what's known as false flag, mm -hmm. false flag type attacks. That was a, you're completely right to point to 9-11 because you got the Patriot Act that came in after that. That's and, right. And the U.S. The temporary well, yeah. Patriot Act. Homeland Security. We're going on 18 years of that, temp or 19 years of that temporary yeah. Patriot Act. And then they get caught snooping on everyone. Right. And what? It's no problem because because Fully terrorism. justified because mm. they're keeping us safe. But the apparatus, the anti-terror apparatus, which was, which was used and built to target uh, Muslim extremists, has been converted to targeting American extremists. So now no longer is the anti-terror apparatus aimed at uh, your Al-Qaeda's and your ISIS's. Now they're aimed at your Proud Boys and so forth. So we, we were right 20 years ago to be deeply skeptical of the interventions that were taking place in the name of fear. And I think we're still just as right now, if not even more so. I mean, it's been 9-11 every single day for 18 months uh, in terms of the, the tension and the anxiety and the propaganda and even the body count. I mean, the body count is through the roof right now. Um, you know, through intubators, through dehydration, through... Not just the virus, but malpractice. Uh, the body count of malpractice in the last 18 months is through the roof. More people died from not getting their cancer screenings than died on 9-11. Um, globally, there are people walking around in their last months alive right now with tumors in their bodies that could have been addressed, but weren't addressed because the virus was more important. Hmm. And we're just scratching the surface. But you know what we should talk about is yesterday's press conference. Would you like to see a clip? Yeah. Are you ready for some clips? You got something to say first? No. Nope, okay, let's get some clips. <laughs> let's take a look at our clips today. So yesterday, let's take a look at this clip. <laughs> I like this clip. So we've got here, how's your audio? Can you hear this? step towards getting people who can you hear that over there in the internet land to uh yep, step up and get vaccinated. no problems so here's I a media it, guy asking her g on august 3rd uh you know about uh, vaccination passports and this is what her g said and so this was actually a really great response this is an accurate response this is one i agree with uh, and the contrast between how he frames the issue here and the position that they took only weeks later is very stark. So it's we'll just take a listen. Down full screen that road. Um, I clicked the full screen and it glitched. Hmm. It's like in some sort of, because I'm not logged in maybe. No, that's okay. That's good. To, uh, step up and get vaccinated? I think it, it's certainly an option to go down that road. Um, I do think we need to be cautious about rushing towards that. Um, you know, we've never really required vaccinations for most people, you know, in society. Dr. Herji said we should be cautious about rushing towards that. And let's understand why. Society. 
you know, there's limited sectors, healthcare sector, where we require certain vaccinations. And I think requiring the COVID vaccine makes a lot of sense there, just given the vulnerable group. But I think we probably should think about the precedent of requiring vaccines for the general public at large. We should think about the precedent of mandatory vaccines for the general public. For uh, how, if how we're going to require... How long should we consider that precedent? Uh, I think about 24 days until we decide to completely flip-flop on this position. For COVID-19, you know, influenza, we have 1,300 deaths on an average year in Ontario from influenza. In a bad flu season, it's going to be much higher than that. It, you know, leads to lots and lots of hospitalizations. There's always a big winter surge in our hospitalizations. We've never required influenza vaccination. And, you know, There's always a big winter surge in influenza, except in 2020. What's so the death count in Niagara? A... Zero. No, what's the death count in Niagara for COVID? 300 and 400, sorry, 420 ish. Okay, so in some, in most flu seasons, we triple that in amount of deaths in influenza. But... I'm not sure if he was limiting it to Niagara in terms of that number. Okay. I'm not sure. I just, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Okay. He may be saying provincially, he okay. didn't actually say in what jurisdiction that number exists. Oh, okay. A precedent that we would want to start requiring vaccinations for all of these different illnesses. You know, I'm, I'm not sure we necessarily need to want to go down that road. Maybe we do, but I think we need to think through that as a society as a whole before we make that decision. Wow. We need to think it through as a society as a whole before we make that decision. We don't necessarily want to go down that road, said Dr. Herji. I think the other thing is that before we force people to get vaccinated, we really should exhaust our opportunities to get people voluntarily vaccinated. And, you know, our numbers have definitely slowed down, but we haven't yet gone out and done a lot of the things that I think we could possibly get that number up. You know, we're just, you know, uh, announcing some, you know, pop-up clinics going to come around where we're going to be out in other community locations. By making it easier to get vaccinated, does that make a difference? As people get out of the summer and they're starting to think about school and, you know, uh, you know, more of their regular routines, is that going to actually lead to a bunch of people being vaccinated? So I don't think we've hit the end of what we can do voluntarily, and we probably want to see how high we can get voluntarily. And if we're high enough at a level where COVID is going to be controlled, to then decide, do we want to take that extra step of forcing vaccinations or not? Monstrous. The final thing I just want to note is that... Yeah, so you're saying, look, we got to continue with the voluntary phase until we get into the mandatory and in his words forced he said forced he didn't even say mandatory what does forced mean like it means it means it means held down and forced but i'm sure he wasn't imagining that when we look but he was cautioning against it he was cautioning against vaccine passports dr herji on august 3rd cautioned against vaccine passports and here's the um, most crucial argument a month ago yeah one month if who gets vaccinated who doesn't um, there's a pretty predictable pattern that people who are less likely to vaccinate are often of lower income they're often uh, people of racial minorities there are people who actually uh, you know live in perhaps uh, uh, less privileged lives than some of the rest of us and I do worry that if we start to create a vaccination requirement, in some sense, this is the group who's actually going to be harmed the most because they're the least likely to be vaccinated. And we're taking marginalized groups and actually marginalizing them even more with the vaccine requirement. We're taking marginalized groups and actually marginalizing them more with the vaccine requirements. A Dr. Herji. Okay? So, um, I mean... I'm not the expert. He's the expert. Supposedly. And he said those words. But of course, this is classic Dr. Herji, where he gives you what appears to be his real advice, and then he bends to political pressure. So not even a month later, he's flipped the script. The entire script got flipped on him. I mean, so I've got some more thumbnails, or some more examples of that. Let's see here. I got my... Uh, I got. I got this one from October 13th last year. So this is Dr. Herji saying that the evidence on masks is not extremely strong one way or the other. And he says that it's a values question. Wait, wait, wait. So, hey, Mr. Scientist, what should we do? Eh, it's a values question. Okay. So this was, this was him explaining in October 
uh, about well after the mask mandate had already gone through. He said this. Was that original August from last year or a month ago? The the thing I just, th- yeah. this other clip, this yeah. was from just one month ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is just one month ago. Wow. And so this uh, it really hits on the, the core point. We're taking marginalized groups and actually marginalizing them further. And so that issue comes up here in this post, which is a series of parodies. Hey. Hey, how do I get this? Uh, I don't want that text at the bottom. All right. So these are parody graphics that were made um, in order to appropriate the language of Black Lives Matter and equity and to apply it to vaccine passports, basically making the same argument that Dr. Herji just made. You're taking marginalized people and marginalizing them further. And so this is a series of... um, this is a series of satirically created graphics which touch upon, uh, which touch upon the topic. You know, here's mentioning the Tuskegee experiments. BIPOC bodies have st- historically been exploited by the government for medical experimentations. Why trust them today? And so on and so forth. You know, and these are meant to be uh, s- like incendiary uh, satire. It's meant to totally il- illustrate both that the vaccine passport is immoral and that the people who should be are arguing the, the case, the equity based leftists uh, aren't. And so we have a screenshot here from one of our favorites, Carrie Porter um, saying that it's reprehensible that a uh, BLM and amnesty logos are, are being appropriated um, to discourage people from vaccines. No, it's not to discourage black people from vaccines. It's to illustrate that the hypocrisy that, uh, Carrie, Carrie, you're supposed to be on our side on this issue. Uh, actually we're on your side in terms of the equity thing. We're saying that more underprivileged people, marginalized people will be more marginalized as a result of this policy. So there we go. There's a couple of, I don't know how I missed all this. You didn't know about any of this? No, I didn't see those memes or that response. Yeah. Well, you know, I probably pump it out. Yeah, we're at WTF Niagara on Twitter, WTF Niagara. Uh, What the fuck? It really stands for what the fuck, not what's the facts. It's what the fuck? (laughs) What the fuck, Niagara? Um, What the fuck? Yeah, so that's a couple of... That's my opening arguments in terms of the vaccine passport issue blowing up the opposition's hypocrisy i think is is point number one uh and so these the carry porters of niagara were all in favor of the vaccine passport um and and uh and shame on you and shame on every single individual who thinks that the vaccine passport is a reasonable thing to do like the thing is with shame, though, is that they've tried to use shame on us. They were like, oh, you guys are shameful, reprehensible, deplorable. So it's really hard to convert that language back at them because they've already appropriated it at us. The very people who were calling Trump supporters Nazis are now requiring you show them their, your papers. Uh, so you were the Nazis the whole time, the whole time, the entire time fucking nazis but i can't use that word because it's been disempowered Mm -hmm. they use that on us we know it's a meaningless word Mm -hmm. but literally they're like medico fascists they want everything to be unified into a singular corporate medical fascist system uh that really baffles the imagination all right get out of here carrie what's that clip we started and didn't finish the next here g clip Oh, well, I was just touching upon how, uh, I mean, I basically recited what he said. How much are they willing to alter lives versus how much do they want to make sure that they're taking those incremental efforts to protect that on screen? COVID-19? And I think council landed on where they think that balance should in terms of how much are they willing to alter lives? How much are you willing to alter lives, council? Well, quite a bit, actually, apparently. Good golly. Good golly. It's really what's difficult is we can't pinpoint the immoral person. It's like a full spectrum 
assault of immorality. So business organizations calling for the V-Pass. Nurses associations calling for the V-Pass. The head of the hospital calling for the V-Pass. Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. Each city council. There was a news report that said 444 municipalities were calling for the V-Pass. Wow. I don't know if that's true. I mean, but considering how feebly constructed the democratic mandate from these municipalities are. So we'll use our, our example here in Niagara. Last last week, regional council called for uh, V-passes, except they didn't put it in the agenda. So typical procedure in the council is if you're going to have something that you want in the agenda, you file it before Friday so it can have public disclosure so that the public can delegate on that issue. No, not this time. Not whenever it's something controversial. They added it to the agenda that day, that night. And of course, in this case, it was a letter uh, from Chair Bradley saying, we as Municipal Niagara Council call for vaccine certificates, yada, yada, yada. Meanwhile, they got practically no public consultation. In fact, did what they could to avoid public consultation. Those grimy bastards. Get out of here, Herji. You know how much money that motherfucker makes? You don't have to pay off people when you're already paying them $300,000 a year. What kind of lifestyle does the guy have? Do you think he could handle being like, okay, you're fired? Oh, you just, uh, you just catch on with the next group. What? It, what, what? Exactly what kind of responsibilities does he have that he's held hostage by his own employment? Um, because that's a lot of money. That's more money than we'll ever see in one year. And I'm not saying he doesn't earn it by being a professional, but that's a lot of fucking money. Here's a guy who gets a lot of money too. So I think this is the, this is where we're at. So there are people are living in a fantasy. The fantasy that they're living in is that you can just wave a magic wand and the unvaccinated will stay out of locations that you declare them illegal in. But the question was posed yeah, yesterday's press conference. You know, what happens when you get to the door and every business has to serve as bouncers? And this is the thing that people aren't necessarily thinking through. Like, literally, how are you going to keep people out? How, what, what, what's that procedure like? So, so he describes it here. We got your audio? to be reasonable and prudent. Uh, I believe this will be implemented um, uh, uh, fairly quickly uh, and efficiently and we'll move on to the QR code so there won't be those types of one-to-one -one interactions. Uh, so there will be a transition time that could be difficult, but... Right. So this is actually really chilling. So he's saying that the, the, the reporter had to ask twice and not really get an answer. This was kind of the best answer to the answer that we got in a five-minute response, and I clipped it down. The question was, what's going to happen when people have to bounce people out of their stores? Do they call the police? And his answer here is, yeah, it could be a difficult transition. Wait, what? well, that's not, first of all, it's not an answer. So you're saying, yeah, we got to call the police when somebody shows up without proper certification? Well, that's horrible. But here he says... We'll move on to QR codes so there won't be those types of one-to-one -one interactions. So imagine that. So you have to show your, you scan the code and it beeps and the door opens. And there's no human involved anymore. Literally like a robotic AI system will decide if and when you can enter. And if there's a human there being like, hey man, can't you do the right thing? They'll be like, oh, the computer says you don't qualify. So, so we can... Was that clear? It seems pretty clear how just absolutely egregious this is. And this is, of course, just stage one. This is at right, your gym, and this is at the club, and this, you know, very simple. There's like four things that you're being blocked from right now. But they say in this press conference, they'll expand it to whatever they want to expand it to. Yeah. It's uh, leading the, the fine edge of the wedge right the right. short part of the wedge they just say oh yeah no i don't think that passports are the way to go a month later oh no vaccine passports are the way to go and right. going back i know i don't know if we talked about this uh, today, fourth but wave anything that 
Justin Trudeau is doing now would be normally be political suicide, and I'm not sure that he's not doing it right now, committing political suicide. Because Let's hope. I hope he is too, because any other time people would look at such tyranny and such uh, arrogance and such lack of diplomacy and go, forget that guy. I'm not going anywhere near that liberal platform. Right. You know, well, there's a couple of scenarios. One scenario is that Justin Trudeau remains prime minister, um, which may not be the worst scenario because we have a very motivated resistance and rebellion group who will continue on uh, knowing that he's a proven liar. Hmm. The it, I don't think a better scenario is Aaron O'Toole becoming prime minister because that will just... That'll just further dissuade the rebellion from re from rebelling because the rebellion is essentially conservative. So just like uh, the Americans sort of let Trump try to be their hero, there's a risk that we're going to let Aaron O'Toole try to be our hero. And of course, that's completely misplaced, totally misplaced, knowing the conservative policies and knowing how much of a spineless like blob of crap politically Aaron O'Toole is. So, so I'm almost rather Justin Trudeau remain in power than Aaron O'Toole take over because I don't want to give anyone a new chance. I don't want anyone to say, oh, let's just give him a chance. No, no. First of all, I, I give two shits what the federal government says because the municipal government is coming for my rights. The provincial government has come for our rights. Um, so why do I even care who prime minister is? They took away our rights before the election. Good point. Justin Trudeau is like, the answer to tyranny is democracy. <laughs> That's he, why we're having an election, so I can continue my tyranny through democracy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Like me with a full mandate, a majority government to do whatever I see fit, and I don't have to appease the D NDP or the Bloc Québécois. Wow, that sounds really dreadful. Mm. I mean, because uh, they got they got a lot through as is. They did. the The economic collapse is going to be just devastating. And I find um, it I find it kind of hideous that Patty Adu or whatever our you know Minister of Health Hadju? Hadju is saying you know how dare. Uh, Jagmeet Singh speak about integrity dude have a little gratitude he propped your government up for six years on and off with the block right well knives out it's political it's election season after all how dare any of them speak about integrity mm -hmm. really anyone um, you know I'm wearing the purple PPC shades uh, I went down to the PPC office I picked up some signs I got some signs out front of my property uh, for the PPC um hey why not uh the way i look at it is not vote splitting no. i'm i'm someone who wouldn't have participated so it's adding my vote to the overall pool mm -hmm. over 45 percent of canadians never vote don't mm -hmm. vote that's a very large pool of potential voters if only you could get them involved so a new party means potentially bringing more people in and not necessarily splitting them off uh, but we do have some uh, some numbers here. So let's take a look at my riding in Niagara Falls. So actually, it's pretty close. This was 2019. Okay. Yep. Crop, right. So we got actually only a 2,000 vote difference between the conservative and the liberal there. Uh, and then the... We've got uh, Peter Terras, Terrace, Peter Terrace, Terrace in Niagara Falls, uh, the candidate in Niagara Falls. I think he's doing a really good job on his campaign. Mm -hmm. I really like what he says. He's always saying the right thing. He's made himself visible on social media, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. um, he seems to have a, a, a backbone in his rhetoric, which I appreciate. He's a florist from the Fort Erie era, area. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I think he'll get way more votes than what we're looking at here, 940 for the PPC in 2019. I think a lot more. He's not foreign to a three-piece suit I like that. He's not, what's that? A three-piece suit is not foreign to him. So That's he, right. He knows he, how to dress the part. He knows how to dress the part. It's Gosh. important, man. It's true. No, you could tell that he was the candidate when I went down and, and, and met him. Um, so really what we're going to... You know, will Tony Baldinelli get those kind of numbers next time? Will 
Andrea Kaiser get a boost this time? I mean, we'll find out. This this seems to me like it's actually a what you could consider to be a, a swing, a swingable. Like the conservatives could lose this. Actually, the PPCs could split this and make Andrea the uh, the winner here. So, um, but if that's what happens, that's what happens. I think it's more important to vote your principles than to vote strategically for what you believe in. Definitely. I mean, because literally, otherwise you're providing your tacit consent to the policies that uh, the cons- the CPC, the Conservative Party, are are saying, which is the same thing. Instead of a vaccine mandate, it's like a testing regimen. So in order to get on a train, you have to demonstrate that you have a negative test. Uh, This is awful. Mm -hmm. This is awful. I would much rather forget about the entire thing and risk it. I'd rather risk everyone than government tyranny is far more dangerous than a virus. And these are the foundational... This is like laying the foundation of a tyranny. So it's not the exact same as like 1930s Germany, but it's the foundations of it. It's the 1920s. We talked about this earlier. It's, you know, I always counsel my friends or coach my friends that go to the number of the beast argument or it's against my religion argument or whatever because it just sounds so radical and extreme there's so many great arguments out there for not taking the shot or not wearing a mask or not um, not not seeing your family or what have you. We know how to take care of ourselves. We know how to take precautions, um, you know, and that we don't need to complicate the issue. There's too many argument the good arguments against whatever you're planning on without going, oh, it's the mark of the beast. But <clears throat> this is the Overton window issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but the, and so you know what I, the ideas I've been hearing surrounding this is, you know, it's not revelation. The shots, not the number of the beast, but what they're doing is laying the groundwork, testing you with masks, testing you with the shots, seeing how far they can push you because this is setting the stage for the antichrist if you believe in god or whatever but it's not the actual shot that's the number of the beast it's this whole infrastructure that they're putting in place designed to push the limits of see what yeah. can government I mean, the main, get away with the main point you know? is is to actually like what's the benefit of describing it in those terms it depends on who you're describing it to so for a pluralistic secular society to go down that road is to uh, not access the values of the listener. So, I mean, if you're pluralistic, which means various religions, not just the one religion, uh, if you're secular, that means of the world, basically, that means not spiritual. It means uh, ethics instead of morals, essentially. There are a lot of ethical reasons to take the positions we're taking that don't need to go down the spiritualist path. And, the, and while it is maybe truer or like a deeper level of true it's also a deeper level of alienation um it depends on who you're talking to i think it's more than i th- i think of the mark of the beast stuff is sort of poetry it's a poetic structure to it uh, it's not like a literal there isn't a literal beast what does it have horns does it have hair does it have like does it snarl when it talks like it's not a beast it's a beast system it's a it's entirely a metaphor to begin with. So to take it as a literal thing, well, but metaphorically it's true. So metaphors can be true without being literally true, I think. Uh I mean that said, the I think we uh we're in big trouble. Uh we're in big trouble. We're past persuasion. We need to have each other's backs, those of us who are like like minded. Um we're in we're in big trouble. So I'm actually a little bit shocked at how much trouble we're in. I uh, I have a almost a two-year-old, and I'm going to have to be there for him as a father. And the society I would have interacted with isn't there for me. Mm. Uh, where am I going to get a job? What am I going to do? Um, how am I even going to be a happy person? 
just like a well-adjusted person. These are all real problems for and, and every conversation and every opportunity is going to hinge on have you been double vaccinated? We've every conversation we're having every right now is surrounded around for that. Uh, December. Right. You know, you know, you're, we're going to get to December and they're going to say, well, we need proof of vaccination at the door. I mm -hmm. just saw Tanya Black in the States going, no. and she's so which door? Um, Tanya Black is in the States. She had tickets for Avatar in the States, her right. favorite band. And they said uh, double vaxxed only. Right. So rather than, or masks only or whatever it was, she wouldn't comply with it. Yeah. So she forfeited her tickets. And then she was on Facebook bawling her eyes out because she's mentally distressed because she wanted to go be with her peeps and hit the mosh pit and right. have some fun and let loose and dancing is everything to her and now she only dances in her bedroom by herself and she was she was ripped and I felt badly for her and you know I'm, I'm not one for you know doing emotional videos and, and, and being vulnerable like that that's just me uh, but I felt completely comfortable and pissed off watching her vent authentically about right. her lack of mental health because she was yeah because she chose not to comply not to go to this uh this thing in the states right well our normal lives aren't coming back without a fight one fight one way or the other it's going to be some sort of fight um what's up with krista krista barrett what up you got another clip to play I got a couple more tabs here before we end up close up the hour. Um, coercion. The most trusted news in Niagara says what? Coercion. So this is a uh, August twentieth, August twenty first uh, editorial. No, no author behind this. Just the St. Catherine Standard, the Niagara Dailies came out with this, and well, they said we know who that is. Enough with the restrictions and the threats of further lockdowns by mandate or coercion, more people need to get vaccinated. I'm sorry. They put that in black and white. They put the word coercion. They're not even trying to hide the ball. Anymore. In black and white. You know, the New York Times came out with the piece that said exactly how they took Trump down by getting four states to, you know, right. approve how we save back. democracy by thwarting yeah. it. And they just said, here we go. We're right on the open. This is how we did it. And Criminals it love to brag. Years ago. Oh, yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. They're not even trying to hide the ball anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, this to me is really mind-blowing. This is super mind-blowing to me because, like, that is advocating a crime. Coercion is criminal. There's no... Coercion is criminal. They're, they're advocating for coercion. I don't know. Define coercion. <laughs> The practice of persuading someone to do something by force or threats. <laughs> the Niagara Daily has called for this. And this is really, really bad. We don't have a legitimate media apparatus. Um, that's, that's pure propaganda. And actually, it's really dangerous. It's dangerous for a few reasons. One, people might follow up on it. and be like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it that way. It normalizes the coercion. Like, well, if the newspaper can call for it, it must not be that bad. So a lot of people are just going to engage in coercion because it was normalized by the, the media. And then also there's those of us being coerced who might react very sharply to this. It's not going to bring out the best in us necessarily. Like, hey, populace, let's, we're going to coerce you now. Well, what the hell are we supposed to do about that? Like, should we go to Grant LaFleche's house and protest at his house? We could at any time. At any time, I could be outside of Grant LaFleche's house protesting. He put his balcony on Twitter. He told everyone where he lives accidentally because of his fucking garden. <laughs> He's so proud of his little garden. Now I know where you live, Grant. At any point, I can be in your... I can be... A, on September 10th, I'll wish you a happy birthday, Grant. I'm not... I'm talking peacefully. But like, Please. happy birthday, Grant. You're a fucking asshole, Grant. You're calling for the coercion of the public. Oh, maybe Grant didn't write this. Maybe it was one of his uh, homies, whoever's left there at the Niagara Dailies. But it's actually, it's blood boiling mm. because this is entirely inappropriate for them to call for a crime on the public. It's coercion. And, and if they're, let's not pretend that the coercion is going to be starting now. Like, oh, like, let's start the coercion. The whole time it's been coercion. The mm. entire time. Anyway, so that's, 
I think that's a pretty sharp note to to nail fucking coercion. And notice this. It's a social distancing sticker. The same kind of sticker I peeled up. Well, this one's pointing at the vaccine clinic, but it's a sticker on the floor. It was always pointing in this direction. And the entire time it was pointing in this direction. Thanks to Doug Ford and uh, what's his Deco? Deco. Yeah, they made a lot of money off of stickers on the floor. What's that company called? I actually don't know. Something Deco. Yeah, I peeled up stickers not knowing that was going to be a thing. Yeah. Uh, had I known, I might have uh, hit that point a little harder. Like, I was more right than I knew. Yeah. Um, I was quoted in Newsweek. Now I got that here. I was quoted in Newsweek. Where is it? Newsweek. Complete trash, but okay. Well, I mean, it's got exposure. Yeah, definitely. So I was quoted in Newsweek. Back to the top. What's that? Yeah, right there. In August 2020. Are you reading it? Yeah, just scroll up just a little bit more. Okay, good. Uh, perfect. <laughs> In the first days of the new mask mandate, I went into a shopper's drug mart and peeled up social distancing stickers while a friend filmed. Uh, the video went viral, and I was asked by Newsweek for a comment. This is what I wrote to the reporter, Matthew Impelli. My country is under United Nations and World Health Organization control. Wow. We're in a false state of emergency. Democracy has been suspended. The online channels I watch get deleted by YouTube. It's true. The normal path, oh, I know all about that. The normal path of raising awareness is shut down and the protests are co-opted. Small businesses are choked while we become dependent on and compliant with big box stores. Meanwhile, everyone is bending the knee to quasi Marxist to a quasi Marxist cult. We have experienced an a what? An iconoclasm. <laughs> okay, you'd pick it up from there. An iconoclasm. <laughs> an iconoclasm is uh, is when you tear down the icons of a society. Okay. So like knocking down Saddam Hussein or renaming Ryerson. Right. are both iconoclastic. And so, uh, you know, I peeled up stickers as a reverse iconoclasm. They're going to riot, break windows, kill people, billions of dollars of damage, and arson. All I did is peel up some stickers because their new structure is built on the foundation of the fear that justifies those stickers. But this is really why I wanted to get to it. Because... Because people love when a prophecy comes true. People are like, oh, you're one of those prophet guys, huh? So I did it. I prophesized. I reject every aspect of the new highlight normal. That. Highlight that? that for us. Sorry? Just highlight it. Highlight it? Yeah. Here we go. I reject right. every aspect of the so-called new normal and understand clearly that this is a massive psychological conditioning operation with the target being administering injections. If mandatory masks and mandatory social distancing... Why not mandatory vaccines? I authored that in August 2020. We are now in the state of mandatory vaccines. But it gets darker. Oh, great. The new normal is unacceptable. And by the time it becomes truly intolerable, the target would not be stickers. I mean, I've got to have to be nonspecific in that because I actually don't know what that means specifically. But I know that they've upped the ante. They've come for our children, our bodily autonomy, our businesses, everything that's fun, everything that's rewarding, everything that's social. Our churches. They want uh, a major big pharma, big telecom controlled corporate fascism. And there's no room for the individual in that. Uh, and the we know it. We've so lost we're, track of... The individual is the highest priority. Individual, I mean, this this idea of groupthink and, and putting people in categories based on their skin color or their medical status is, is abhorrent. Right. The, the highest ideal is the indi individual. It has to be. Yeah. I mean. That's the, uh, get it. the ultimate minority is the minority of one. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I'm happy to be here with you, Jim. 
I appreciate being here and having this opportunity. I know that people do listen to uh to our talks and that it it means something to them. So I thank the the viewers as well. Yeah, we got some comments of people that are appreciative and just uh, we got any comments we want to reply to before we close it out for yeah, the hour. Yeah, I can get to that. Um, just to say though, um, you know, we kind of had this plan for a week or so, and um, we had a I think we had an idea of what we might do here or whatever. Um, I don't ever plan anything unless it's an interview and like we just decided oh, you want to go live I'm like yeah all right I can throw the shit together it doesn't take that too long hey we got a second computer here now yeah th thanks that's to Tim cool. this works out really well so I can have yeah I can have him like uh, hit that uh, minilog to hit play on that over to the right see so plays the third button in yeah middle minilog the silver one this is, this thing's loaded up with so much shit, too. Simply having a wonderful new world order. <laughs> okay, can I stop it, though? Yeah, just press the, lit, the button that's lit up again. Press the red button that's lit up there. It says play. No. Third button in, middle. Yep, right there. See, it's lit up. It says play. Yeah. It says play. P hit it again. Why are you making me so stupid? On hit the, the play button again. Everyone's the one watching that, right now. It's red. <laughs> no, hit the play button. It's red already. I make you get up again. <laughs> well, folks, hold the line. Stay, stay alive. <laughs> Survive. <laughs> are we gonna read some comments? Is yeah, we're we gonna read some comments, but. We got distracted. two minutes until our next thing. Um, oh yeah, I got to take a call. Jim's taking a call. Oh, thanks yeah, for tuning sure. in. Thanks for uh, following oh, me. Anyways, at WTF I just wanted Niagara. to say I didn't plan this out too greatly, and that's fine. All we planned was a hang and a brainstorm session, but Boom. just talking out there makes me feel like I'm not alone because yesterday I had a bad day. Yeah, me I too. was really black pilled yesterday, hopeless. And I'm supposed to be right now helping to pick people up, keep them positive. Right. And I'm like, I want out of this country so bad. I can't. I just, you know, now my birthday, September 22nd, has become D-Day, which, you know, if I'm not on a flight out of this country before then, I, I feel like I won't get out of it. And I really have never wanted to leave so badly. I don't. Right. Which makes it hard that. for us to plan the future when never, it's like never wanted to leave. But and I'm not sure that that's going to actually happen, but I have options and I just have to look at it. Anyways, Kathy Cross, right. Flu season does not fit their plans. Yeah, uh, we're in for a rough winter, folks. Find me on social we're media in for a rough now. winter, to it's be there. honest. We, we need to really prepare, like prepare for the worst case scenario. Leighton says pharmaceutical intervention fooled the nations. Maria Jane, I'm glad you guys are able to sift through these updates. I can't stand hearing any of their voices. <laughs> Will he is says, but I'm racist for not liking race swapped comic characters. Jennifer right. Marco. That's right. Richard Sirit. Richard Syrit show yesterday said the profile of a non back vax person is a 42 year old female who voted liberal that's uh, according to some studies i saw that that is wow. not just a random claim uh the profile of a non-vaxxed person in the states is a 42 year old female who voted liberal Dude, that doesn't fit the narrative that doesn't fit no, the stereotype none of it fits the narrative but we, like honestly women yeah, this guy are says. so precious and wonderful that the idea that we're going to experiment with their reproductive capabilities is just egregious. It's just totally messed up. I, we could go on for we could really go go on for hours, but we're going to end up in a second hour now yeah, if we keep going. This. I got a call to take. Um, so we're going to cut, cut and run. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for having us, Jim. Us, me, and myself, and I. And uh, happy to be here with you. Thanks, brother. And I'll be back. All right. Peace out. Uh, go check out WTF Niagara. We are out.